Hello and welcome to the webinar EQE, the European Qualification Exam of 2021 will be different. Let's take a closer look to the new online exam. My name is Thomas and I'm a patent attorney in Germany. For about six years I'm lecturing European patent law for EQE candidates at the SIP Institute of the University of Strasbourg. Recently, I was appointed by the EPO president as a member of the EQE examination committee. So I got access to the new online examination platform called WiseFlow, which will be used for the EQE this year. The following information is based on the test account in WiseFlow. So I cannot 100% assure that the system remains unchanged until the exam. It is already clear that the EQE has its flaws and the WiseFlow tool has some pleasant limitations. However, it is not the time to moan about it. Let's uh, take a look at tips and tricks how to cope best with the EQE. The European Patent Office um, uses um, the commercial examination tool, WiseFlow. This tool works for different devices and operating systems. Um, please do not assume that it is a pure web application. Instead, it is a local installed tool. Um, for the EQE, it is required to have a webcam a microphone and a speaker. Of course, a stable internet connection is also required. Um, you will have to first install the so-called FlowLock browser. This is the downloaded tool. You install it once, maybe you later have to update it. It has 97 megabytes. So take your time to download it, it may take a while. For installing the FlowLock browser, you have to have admin rights on your computer. So be careful with highly secure company PCs, which might block somehow the install process. This website here shown on the left slide shows um, kind of first entrance to the flow lock, uh, life flow system. On the right side, you have papers for download. And before you actually start up the browser from this website, you have to download the papers. Um, downloads are limited to, um, uh, strongly limited to just a few documents in the exam. Um, the documents you usually use for highlighting are not a, um, available for download, unfortunately. So let's have a closer look to the FlowLock browser. Unfortunately, the name of the browser says it all. It heavily locks your computer. When I first tried it, I was surprised because the browser refused to work unless I close a lot of um, applications and exe files on my computer. So it forced me to shut down Dropbox, Outlook, Chrome browser, uh, and a lot of other tools. And when the Flodo browser is running, it blocks maybe, um, um, yeah, actually everything you usually do with your computer. So you cannot do screenshots. Um, you cannot switch to another program on your computer. Um, the Flowlock browser actually completely fills your screen from top to bottom and from left to right. Um, unfortunately, you cannot um, reopen the Flowlock browser once you have closed it, unless a uh, invigilator agrees. So that is the reason why you have to download the exam papers beforehand uh, from the web page. Um, 
And of course, before closing the browser, please um, complete the exam and hand it officially in. It is um, for the EQ only allowed to have uh, one screen. And I, I tested uh, uh, in a mock exam um, with uh, just a notebook screen, uh, which is a, a little too small. Um, so um, I recommend to, to have a bigger screen, a, a, um, a desktop screen would be, would be better. Um, the microphone and the webcam are actually used by an artificial intelligence built into the Viceflow system which kind of monitors suspicious activities. So you should uh, not use your mobile phone next um, uh, to you. You should not have a, another computer next to you. You should avoid speaking to anybody in the room because it is not allowed to, to have other persons in your exam room. Let us now dive into the heart of the Flowlock browser. It is the editor for uh, typing in your answer document. So here on the left side, you see um, a simple editor and the different icons for formatting. There is a clock with play time. If you use a laptop, the battery status is shown. Um, this is necessary because the um, browser completely fills the screen, so you are not um, able to see uh, the Windows uh, taskbar. Um, I tried different formats, so here you can see there's an automatic format for um, four different uh, heading styles. Um, there is one for notes um, with a gray box behind. You have uh, different sizes for your text. Um, you can uh, format the text bold, you uh, can underline, you can make it italics. Um, uh, the text can have different colors and you can highlight with different colors. Um, you have bullet points and you have a table here at the bottom. Um, of course, there is a invigilator chat function and um, you can display the different exam papers on separate tabs up here. Um, the system seems to crash when you use more than 10 tabs, so please don't do it. Just use 9 tabs or 10 tabs at maximum. Unfortunately, the tabs are not named uh, very intuitively. So I, I kind of recommend to, to have a system how you can find or identify uh, the different tabs. You can use post-its on your screen or you type it in um, as a list um, on your answer paper. So like um, uh, tab one is your answer paper, tab two is document D1, and so on. As your answer document um, um, will become quite long and also the um, exam papers are long, um, you need to scroll a lot through the documents. So I would recommend to have a scroll mouse uh, instead of clicking the scroll bar every time, which is uh, more time consuming than the scroll mouse. Switching between the mouse and typing on the keyboard can be quite time consuming. So how about using shortcuts? Um, the following um, uh, shortcuts are available in the editor, for example, um, um, control uh, plus A for selecting all, um, copy, paste, cut, make bold, underline, and italics. So that um, uh, significantly speeds up your, your work and your formatting when you are used to it. So you should train it before. Um, I recommend 
and that's maybe uh, the the um, uh, basic story I like to to uh, convey today is make extensive use of copy and paste with this new online exam. Um, so when you're reading the exam document and you find something interesting which you like to use in your answer paper, then um, copy and paste it with these shortcuts uh, to uh, the answer paper. Um, I, I tried it uh, within several papers. Um, um, now it seems that copying larger portions is possible. Um, in earlier versions, it was reported that the, the, the copying amount was limited to some lines, but um, I tried um, 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 to copy two pages. And I was also able to select uh, text over two pages. Um, another tip I like to give you is avoid handwritten notes. Of course, you are allowed to, to do handwritten notes. Um, however, um, um, you cannot scan your handwritten notes and hand it in afterwards. So instead, I would recommend to use or to combine the copy and paste method with writing on your answer paper or using your answer paper as a scrap sheet where you collect and organize everything you read. Um, of course, later you can delete the scrap sheet or what is more, um, you can copy and paste information from the scrap sheet part in the answer paper to your actual answer paper. So you can reuse it once you, you um, have it here in the system. And, and that is not possible with handwritten notes. Um, the search function control plus F uh, uh, shortcut works on your answer paper. Unfortunately, it does not work within the exam papers. Um, you can undo and redo also with uh, the well-known shortcuts control C and, and control Y. In the next few slides, I'd like to step back to get a more abstract view on the EQE. What is actually the misery or the secret sauce to solve any EQE, irrespective of whether it is online or offline? So the information for your answer must be somewhere in the exam paper. Of course, it is not, if it is not served on a server platter for you, just go and find it. So no, uh, uh, do not invent or read something into the exam paper, which is not there. Rather, try to structure the information properly to be able to see a pattern or, or respectively the solution. So how is the chaos structured in practice? Um, in former times, you used highlighters to highlight in uh, uh, different colors, different subject, subjects in uh, the exam paper. So in paper A, for example, you highlighted in the client letter any text known from the prior art in red to avoid using that information in your answer paper. Um, you, you usually um, highlighted um, optional features which you use in dependent claims in a certain color. However, this will not be possible this year, at least not easily. How you do it in the EEQE this year? I would propose to use the answer paper as your scrap sheet and to um, write down the categories uh, used in former times for highlighting as kind of headlines and to copy paste back and forth from the exam paper. It is helpful to, um, to uh, denote the uh, source, so 
um, you will have um, uh, paragraph numbers. So make use of that because later if you want to see the whole text, um, uh, it makes it easy to find it in the exam paper. Um, maybe you just type in um, a abbreviation um, or uh, a brief word describing what you found. So it's maybe not necessary to, to copy paste everything because that takes time if you switch between the exam paper tab and the, the um, answer tab. But I think the, the most important change from, um, from a paper exam to the EEQE is you have to find a way to structure the exam paper now without having the possibility to highlight or underline or even format anything in the exam paper. So again, trying to find a solution, how to structure the content of the papers. And one possibility would be to use headlines and copy paste parts of the document in here on your scrap sheet. And then finally reuse this information in your final answer. Or maybe copy and paste text portions of the exam paper into the answer paper and use the highlighting function in the editor shown before. What else can I tell you? Um, I think it makes sense to have a kind of to-do list. So if you discover um, details um, which do not fit into the system, or if you, if you find information which you have to deal with later on, um, write it down to not forget it. For uh, paper C, it might be useful to use the known cover sheet method, where you, uh, whenever you read a, um, um, a prior document, you immediately try to use the information you read in a novelty attack. If the novelty attack does not work, you know you have to combine this document with another prior art for an inventive step um, attack. Um, I think um, because of copy and paste, this method now makes much more sense than in former times um, when, when we tried this um, in, in uh, handwriting. Believe me, not only the exam paper is sometimes confusing. Quite often your scrap sheet and your answer paper is too. Learn in this section how to navigate through your answer paper as quickly as possible. The um, Flowlock tool has on the right side the possibility to automatically generate a table of contents, which is based on the heading format here. So, um, of course, do not focus too much on the formatting stuff. Content always matters more. However, your answer paper will become quite long and you do not have the possibility to kind of make a split screen or display the answer paper in two different tabs. That is not possible to deal with a long document, as you know it may be for Microsoft Word. So a good chance to navigate your document is by using um, the automatic uh, headings and the table of content. Some other nice tips include shortcuts. With control arrow up or down, you can uh, jump from one paragraph to another with the post one and end keys on your keyboard. You can jump to the very beginning or the very end of the document at once. With control arrow left and control arrow right, you can jump um, uh, one word to the right or one word to the left. 
Um, in fact, with these with these shortcuts, you can basically replace the function of a mouse. And as I said before, um, switching between keyboard and mouse can be quite time consuming. As also mentioned before, um, there is no highlighting function available for uh, A, B, and C exam papers, at least not for uh, the parts of the exam where you need highlighting usually. But as I said, the copy and paste function works quite well. Um, um, and and you, you need to use that because the important parts you cannot print. Usually you can print um, uh, the drawings uh, for, for uh, paper A, for example. So here you can see a very simple PDF viewer, which is actually not capable of, of any useful things. You have Zoom here. Um, but no, no highlighting or other editing functions are available. And here you also see the tabs, and you see they are all called Vice Flow, which is not very useful. So that's the reason why you have to have a system to know what is on which tab. Um, the Vice Flow browser offers you a side-by-side -side view for um, the exam paper and your answer paper. In fact, on the right side, there's a small preview of all the PDFs. And if you simply click on the preview, you can zoom the preview a little. Unfortunately, it is just a zoomed preview. Um, you cannot copy paste in this view but it might help you together with your scrap sheet and your copy pasted content um, to verify um, um, or deeper read the exam paper to make your final answer. In this next to last section, um, I collected some miscellaneous tips and tricks for you one tip is use the available space best. As you can see here, the first heading uh, requires a lot of space. And a lot of space means you have to scroll a lot, which is, again, time consuming. So think about using a rather small text and the smaller headings. And if you need to compare two text sections next to each other, you can use the table function. This is the icon here. You know the problem, you accidentally deleted something and control C does not work to, to uh, undo. Don't worry. Um, it is not possible actually to accidentally delete your full answer paper because the system um, uh, tracks revisions and you can jump back in the history um, and, and show former versions of your answer paper. So that might be useful. Another important tip. Um, try to train as much as possible to be ready for the exam. Um, in all Windows-based PCs, there is a simple editor included. It's called WordPad. And WordPad has also a very limited number of formats. So you can use that tool and restrict yourself during training to the functions you have in Viceflow. And you can try to solve um, old exams, EQE exams with this setup. Um, you should try to, to quickly uh, copy and paste. So usually you use the mouse uh, together with the, the shortcuts, Control C and Control V, um, and try to, to make it happen as, as um, 
as fast as possible. You don't want to lose time uh, for this form of things. And I have to tell you that um, it is necessary to type in your answer with a keyboard. So in former times, I, I remember um, for, handwritten, for the handwritten exam, we tried to find pens um, um, which, which uh, you can use for quite fast writing and, and which um, do not have too much resistance. Um, otherwise, your, your hand wrist gets into trouble after three days of uh, exam. And um, if you just use um, uh, two fingers to type in um, your exam, you, you might be not as efficient as with using 10 fingers. And um, so I recommend to use touch typing in German Saint Finger system. Um, um, it's, it's not about the technique itself, um, um, because um, touch typing, um, of course, increases the speed, um, but it also um, uh, reduces the switching of attention between something uh, you read um, and touch typing um, avoids always looking at the keyboard during your type. And of course, it, it reduces next strain. So maybe for this year, um, it might be too late to learn it. But for next year, I, I would definitely recommend to be an expert in touch typing and, and to be able to, to write a lot of words per minute, um, as, as this can really turn into a, a plus compared to handwritten exam. Now, Drum roll. We have reached the final section with the ultimate tip. You might notice a small button on the ref, uh, right up corner of the full of browser called external resources. If you click it, a menu will drop up and um, there you, you have access to uh, the EEQE FAQs. And these FAQs are on the website, the EPO website. So you will see this website in the background here. By the way, I had to take photos with a camera because no screenshot was available when I run, when I ran uh, uh, the flow of browser. Um, it is not a complete um, uh, internet browser, so you don't see the URL. Um, however, you see this very interesting search function. So you can search the EPO website in, within the Viceflow system. Um, I cannot assure you that this function will be available in, in uh, the exam, but during the mock exam, it was available. Particularly, it was available for paper D. Of course, I, I do not tempt you to um, uh, rely only on, on searching uh, in the EPC and Office Journal and guidelines uh, in this tool. You should always have your prepared commentary next to you. However, uh, for some questions, it might be necessary to dig deep and find a particular uh, old decision uh, of the Boards of Appeal, for example. For these rare cases, it might be useful to use this search function. Um, the control F uh, search function on, this, on the website does not work, but the search function here at the top of the page works just fine. Finally, I wish you all the best for your exam and thanks for listening.